Welcome to Insanity with Jamie and North Emma today. We have John. Hello, again. We decided to put John out of his comfort zone. Yeah, I'm forever out of my comfort zone, but even more so than usual. Because you primarily drink black tea. Yes, or normal tea as I call it. Normal tea? Yeah. yeah. In Britain it is normal tea. Yeah. Um, I think there's probably worldwide more green tea drunk because there's a billion and a half people in China. Here in the UK, people mostly just drink black tea, but not me. Yeah, well, I've persuaded to have some uh, some green tea. Yeah. So I believe you've had green tea once before? Um, once or twice. I think I've taken a sip of it here or there. Have you ever had the, the, the good green tea that's made with, with nice big leaves? Probably not. Oh, well. Probably this, top be... price. The, oh, my bells were impressive in there, actually. Uh, this will be a, a new experience for you, then? Yes. I don't know if it's really strong enough yet, but we'll give you half a cup. And see how it is. I, I was flash is compared to my last it's not, year. It's it's not <laughs> well, even even that that will feel either that, either amazing, that, either, amazing either, against your yeah, neck. Yeah, that I just peed myself a little bit. <laughs> Drinking as I'm not sure it was one of the other. Excitement and fear. Yeah, I'll take a sip to see how it tastes. It probably tastes quite a lot like hot water at the moment. Yeah, it tastes like hot water. <laughs> <laughs> it will get better a bit with with some brewing time. With age. Exactly, yeah. It's, green trees can be tricky because, you know, they, they do taste a bit pathetic to begin with. And then you leave them too long and it's horrible. They just get really, really bitter. Yeah, so it's a bit like a career in comics. You start <laughs> off pathetic and then you end up bitter. You can actually just open your mouth and it's like, I, I love to have a tea tree in my It's amazing. Yeah. It's like a Lovecraftian or a Cronenbergian horror to the tea stomach. I had the most terrifying dream about Cthulhu a couple of weeks ago. Have you seen this? Was this I, I, was, I was just walking around <laughs> and I realised that that like half the sky was taken up with Cthulhu. And like I was the only person that could notice because there was a, an anti-perception field around the world oh. that stopped people noticing Cthulhu just staring down at them like this. <laughs> and, then this thing happened, which I genuinely didn't realise actually happened outside of the Nightmare Elm people. Right. But I, I woke up and I was like, oh wow, that was a crazy dream. And then I looked out of my bedroom window and Cthulhu was there. And I literally at that point did wake up because I was screaming so loudly. <laughs> now that, that, that does happen in movies, that's happened to me before a couple of times as well. But I was, was, I was not had nightmares in ages, but I remember when I used to be like, I was a kid and it was like a tad dream, it was like. I dream like there was like, you know, it was like Pennywise the clown out there trying to kill me and I'd wake up like, you know, my mum would be in the room and I'd put it in her back and turned I'm like, oh my god, mum, I just had a type of dream that it'd be like Pennywise, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd be like, ah, wake up for real, you know, yeah, that's, so it never, does happen. It never happened to me before. So what happened, like, you know, like then there's just, just that, like, just No, literally, I, I, I saw Cthulhu staring at me through my window and then I actually genuinely did wake up. Uh, but what was really actually, confusing was that the day before, uh-huh. I'd stayed up until about three in the morning reading a very confusing, like, about a very confusing news story on Twitter um, involving uh, a senior politician and a farm animal. Yes, so... And that's all I really want to go into about this. <laughs> but it was such a surreal story that I woke up and thought, wow, what had I drunk yesterday <laughs> to make me have a dream about Cthulhu <laughs> and, this... and that new story, <laughs> which must also definitely have been a dream since it like, sure couldn't it have, have happened in the real no. world. And then I went back on Twitter and right. I was like, oh no, only half of it was a dream. Wait till he finds out that it was all real and none of it was a dream. <laughs> he got the anti-perception fuel back up. Yeah. Thing. At this point, it genuinely wouldn't surprise me. Hail Cthulhu. <laughs> It's looking weak, but it's now at the point where you can drink it. I'll move your tea over this way this time, so I just pour it on your lap. There you go. Oh, there's more colour in this time as well. Right away, I can see. Um, it's not just like water colour; it's like proper it's green, I suppose. We should probably explain what this tea is as well. It's not just any old green tea. Our pre-rain yeah. long chin tea. That's that's correct. Yeah, it's uh. pre-rain long chin tea. From Pico tea again. Having a bit of Pico tea thing today. And it's interesting because um, I, I think you might have seen them when I was picking them out my teeth, but it's like um, proper, like, you no know, loss, almost like blades of grass or something. So, Jamie's about to demonstrate for us. Oh dear, that's like all of them, I don't want that. Go oh. back in the packet, go back in the packet. Ah! Oh, not here. It's okay, I've got them here. Here are some of the leaves. 
Yeah, see you smoothie. There's one there. Uh -huh. Completely flat because they've been pressed flat. And these ones are um, particularly high quality long jim. Well, there. Yes, please, yeah. Um, because it's pre rain. I don't really know how that makes them better. No, it's pre the rain. According to the back of the packet. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. Yeah. According to the back of the packet, it does make them a lot better. And certainly, I did have some other pretty high grade um, long gin tea. Um, and this is certainly, I think, slightly sweeter. And there's not much less astringency. Well, not much, because the other one doesn't have any astringency. But a little bit less astringency. Yeah, I don't taste any bitterness in like that. It's there shouldn't be any bitterness in this. Nice. It should just be like a sweet, kind of cut grass flavour. It's going to be a herby quality to it. It's nice. Mm, I really like it. Um, I'm a little hesitant to tell you how much this cost. Yeah, it's not because my dad wants to go 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 go. It's all right. No, no, no. Um, you can absolutely drink as much of it as you want. That's not the issue. It's just more uh, what you'll think of my extravagance. So this is thirty grams, and um, which isn't very much. No, it's um, delay. But this is about fifteen pounds. Well, that's quite impressive. That's quite indulgent. Yeah. So well, you're, you're talking it. about if if you're wanting like your standard, you know. 250 gram packet that would come to about 100 pounds. Wow. Um, so I feel like I'm tasting a luxury tea right uh, now. Yeah, so for the, the, if you wanted the quantity that we of the uh, Yorkshire tea that we had earlier, that bag of Yorkshire tea, that would be about 100 pounds for that. Oh, that's crazy. But well, that's uh, interesting though because never I go to like coffee shops, I think there's all these different ranges <coughs> of coffee you can get and different tiers and all that stuff. And I always feel a bit bad taking tea because it's kind of like, well, oh, tea's just tea. Um, like, but now, like, through doing this and tasting different levels and different you know, textures, you can say, no, tea isn't just tea, you can get different kinds of tea, oh, yeah. different classes and different levels. Because I always feel a bit, because that's why I probably take hot chocolate on coffee shops more, because I always kind of resent paying two pounds for hot water on a tea bag. Most, most coffee shops you go to in Glasgow, yeah. most coffee shops will just be hot water in a tea bag. Yeah. There's some that aren't, there's some that are much better than that. If you were wanting tea from coffee shop type places, I'd recommend Dawson Street Coffee. All right, okay. But as a coffee drinker myself, I wouldn't ever really get tea there because they also have no. the best coffee. No, you know, right. I know. Like, their, their, their tea is really good, but then their coffee is fantastic. And that's not actually totally adverse to coffee. I can take an occasional. I like that odd. Like, I like things like vanilla lattes, but I have so much other stuff in the <laughs> coffee. No, um, I just like just, just the coffee and some water, please. And black is midnight and midnight's night. So, Golden Street, I was typically order a coffee even though their tea is really good. The other one is Tinderbox. Yeah. Tinderbox have really great tea. It's they give it in a pot. Yeah, it gives you they give you in a pot with and it's loose leaf and it's good high quality loose leaf. It's not like the tiny little stuff that yeah, we like just earlier. powder. Broken leaves but not like fannings. Um yeah. Which I should explain is what the name of the tiny little broken up. Oh, I thought it was like one of the like Dakota you know, fanning. Yes, Dakota and her sister who was in L, L that's the one. Yeah. yeah. They shove them oh, into well, bags yeah. and then you pour boiling water on yeah. them. To be honest, the only people that I think you'd probably hate enough to justify doing that to you would want to drink them here. <laughs> I, I don't like, think I'm not sure about what Nigel Farage and my detective system. I'm not sure I really, I'm not sure I hate him that much. No, no, Ron isn't like me either. No. I don't like black tea. <laughs> Give me white tea. <laughs> it's a trap! Tinderbox. Tinderbox. Tinderbox do really good tea. And um, the other thing I found impressive with Tinderbox is if you order a tea to go, they still give you loose leaf tea, but they put it into a bag. Oh. So it's the same tea, but it's put into like little specially made up tea bag for you. Oh, and they, nice. they actually just do it for you on the on the spot there. Wow, that's nice. That's so cool. it's a really good really specialised. And although they, their food is very expensive, the tea isn't really much more expensive than anywhere else. No, okay. And this is an interesting experiment <laughs> experiment because now um, Jamie has refilled the pot using the same green tea leaves and apparently yes. green tea can do that because my experience of reusing tea for a cup is with my gran, who's obsessed with being mindful of not wasting stuff, will like dry out our tea bag and reuse it a second time. Yeah. And I'll like, argue that she can't do it, she should try and sneakily make one for with a second cup to prove that it's perfectly fine. And I always taste yeah, it right away and go, What the hell, you know? Yeah. So, like when you have the when the leaves are very, very broken up like that, they have a big surface area, yeah. And so the water just sort of 
gets into them and yeah. takes out all the flavour of them right away. Yeah. So it brews much, much, much faster. I mean, you can put a tea bag in the tea and take it yeah. out in 30 uh, seconds. Yeah. Um, with big leaves like this, it'll take a couple of minutes to brew, but the plus side is that, first of all, there's less bitterness that you get when you brew tea too long. Yeah. And secondly, you can just keep reinfusing it. I mean, I'd probably reinfuse this again. Yeah. Um, I, won't, I won't talk to you by making you drink every no. single pot. <laughs> Judge um, by the level. Just keep, keep going until like we're on the seventh pot and it's starting to wane a bit. Yeah, and at that point, like, I stop even just like going for a break to the bathroom and just like <laughs> just, here or something. Just get a big nappy. It'll take slightly longer to brew this time, but it's okay. I've still got a bit of tea left. In my fantastic mug, which I'm just going to show off. Yeah, it's a cubist mug. It's amazing. It is. It's got a, a weird hole at the top, um, but it's... It's really cool. I was, looking, I was admiring that earlier, actually. I was going to mention it. Yeah, it's, and I, I like the, um, the scroll-style um, logo, which isn't in any way a reference to a British amp manufacturer. Yes. I'm going to try this tea. My, my main overriding memory of London was the fact that the tea was dreadful. I know that people go on about how tea leaves are like, really important part of the tea, but ultimately, if you haven't visited London, you realise that water is probably yeah. ten times more important. Yeah, and it's interesting, you don't appreciate good quality water until you don't mm. have it. Because, I mean, here in Glasgow, you can, as we just did a couple of minutes ago, we, we made perfectly drinkable tea with, you know, completely bog standard tea bags. Mm-hmm. Um, it was nice enough. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, the water blended to it nicely. Yeah. yeah, because we have really good surface water, it's not ground water, it's, yeah. it's from a natural lake. It's interesting though because like you know we like to make fun of Glasgow or whatever it is and say oh yeah yeah but the tip blah 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 but Scotland actually has a lot of stuff we take for granted that a lot of places don't have like what always strikes me is whenever I visit New York I'm always like kind of caught out of breath because of how poor the air quality is really you know in terms of like kind of thick with like but if it's pollution or what it is but like I'm always, I'm always having, I'm always feeling dehydrated and it's dried out, and I have to get like water, bottled water, water to drink because like the air quality, you just taste it in your mouth, like the yeah. kind of the dust and. I've, I've heard that from people down talking about like China places, but I guess once you said it, New York shouldn't surprise me. But, yeah. yeah. It's interesting because green tea doesn't look particularly green. Um, no, the leaves are green. Yeah, the leaves are green. You know, but I was expecting bright radioactive green. You know. You can means, if you make a matcha, which is. Like a Japanese tea, where the leaves are being ground down into a very, very fine powder. Yeah. Um, and then you actually like whisk it into the water. Yeah. Um, so the the little tiny, tiny powder bits of tea are suspended in the water, and you drink the whole thing. You yeah. smell. Um, that sort of almost that's got a kind of neon. You know, it kind of looks a bit like um, the the ooze from. Um, <laughs> From Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. See the secret of the ooze. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My marketing is, is dreadful. <laughs> I'll, I'll be marketing these episodes heavy. I'll probably do more marketing than you did. Yeah, I, that would be very kind of you. Um, it means that you know people might watch them. But every time I start to do anything involved in marketing, I tend to think of Bill Hicks in the back of my head going, If you work in marketing, kill yourself. Yeah, don't Bill Hicks, you know, is a very inspiration figure, but you shouldn't take too much. <laughs> from him, you know, if you're trying to build the brand. That's, that is true, yeah. <laughs> Trying to build a brand, he managed somehow, but nobody's entirely sure how. Yeah, he went for that anti-capitalism dollar. And I think he was, I think he was quite bitter about the fact he had any success. Yeah, it's like right. damn it, people watching a me. Complicated relationship with his own success. Yeah, I kind of feel that's what would happen to Ian Laurie if he ever really did make it big. Yeah, like you know, once it gets world conquest, it's like knowing I know an Alexander Webb because there was no more world left to conquer. Yes, yeah. yeah. No, I say Ian Laurie, who's the artist of my comic and then when it's gone, is fantastic. He's like probably like I've said this before, but like he was my favorite artist before I got to work with him. Uh, but he's someone who does like lots of weird, you know, really kind of like culty, small press Scottish stuff, and I want to kind of. So Emily was gone is probably a once my weirdest book and his most mainstream kind of comic. And it was quite cool getting to go to New York Comic Con and have like American fans, you know, come up to him and know his work and stuff. And I would love to see him like do like, you know, like a Batman comic or a Doctor Strange comic or something, you know. And he's like he's he's like they would never hire me, you know. But I think I think I think it's easy to go the wood, you know. Maybe you know it's be interesting to see like, you know, how he would take to be like, you know, the mean the new mainstream. Yeah, well, you've already introduced him to a global market, yeah. which is bizarre in and of itself when you think, when you look back to, uh, I'll maybe link to Horror Mountain. 
Yeah, yeah. Put, put one of the horror man, which is a fantastic call. Kevin, Kevin Reedy and Laurie's horror man. Yeah, and never want to drink tea or anything else ever again after doing it. In case there's like parasites lurking in it. We should invite Captain Tits to, to come on one of our shows. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't even see why we should invite you more than one of our shows. Just the Captain Tits, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, went, I went to the less disturbing option. <laughs> <laughs> Tea with Captain Tits. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, I know. Ian Lord is actually an avid coffee enthusiast. He made the stuff like our rival coffee blog. Coffee with Ian Laurie and Captain Tits. Yeah. <laughs> just this kind of thing using in the background, you know. I'd, I'd watched that, so <laughs> I'd watched the, the shit out of that shit. <laughs> I should probably uh, ask you what you, you feel about your experience of drink, drinking proper green tea for one of the first times it's been transcendent <laughs> um, <laughs> um, it's actually been really interesting because like you may, obviously perhaps because you made it really well but I've always had this idea of like green tea being really bitter and kind of like, a real quiet taste or something so you have to get used to it but I think it's totally an accessible drink I would happily have something like that like you know a restaurant or whatever you know and I'd be happy to take that instead of a cup of tea and I have to take a cup of like black tea, you know, it's nice flavour, it's smooth, it's not overpowering, it's not too strong, it's not got like that kind of like bitterness that I was expecting. Um, yeah, I think it's a nice cup of tea. And it still has like what I recognise as a tea like flavour. Yeah. But also has a kind of different texture to it as well and it doesn't need milk to kind of dump it Because I think that's something as well that I've noticed that I was thinking I've seen this in an earlier episode, but um, for me, when I drink tea, it's kind of, a lot of it's kind of like hiding the tea flavour, putting milk in, <laughs> drinking that's piping hot, and you're gulping it down, you know, about letting the flavour come out. This, you kind of start to get the flavour, so you don't need to kind of cloud it down in milk, you don't need to drink it when it's too hot. And you start to get a kind of texture to it, a kind of like, you know, earthy flavour almost, it's quite nice. Mm, it is, does, it, it's a really good tea. It's, it's, I think if you compare it to a black tea, I think it's less intense. Yeah. Um, but it has a much sort of lighter floral notes kind of come yeah, through. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a bit, I don't like to use the word brighter, but it is. It is brighter tea. Yeah. And sort of kind of uplifting feeling. Yeah, no, it is. It's nice. You kind of just get a you kind of like, you know, you can feel it running through you, but it's nice. Not just in the sense that I need to go to the bathroom again. So. <laughs> yes. How many cups have you had there? Um, I think it's like cups. seven cups. Seven cups of tea. By the start of this, I said I'm probably good for two cups. <laughs> well, I apologise for um, the... <laughs> Despite, I mean, the fact that I have objected to having more and more cups today as I've been enjoying it. Oh, I, hope, I hope you have. I particularly hope you enjoyed that one because you know, I'm introducing it something a bit different. <laughs> that's, that's really like not... I, I, once I bought tea, it has to be bought, so yeah. it's better to be drunk. It's got a sell-by date on it. Yeah, that was good. I thought it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And based on that, I would be more inclined to try green tea again in the future. Having, having got back to tea. Yeah, now they've brought things full circle. Full circle. I hope you've enjoyed our little trip through various tangents. Yeah, I'm not sure how much of it will make it to the final video. No, like basically the whole the final video is like five minutes long. It's like, that was good. That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if there are many tangents in there, we hope you enjoyed them as much as we enjoyed our tea. And if there wasn't any tangents, then I hope you just enjoyed and imagined they were good. I'll put some in. Yeah, I'll leave, no, I'll leave you should, a couple you in. Just, just, you know. Yeah. I'll I'll leave out the ones about like. I think you should keep in the Cthulhu ones. They were our best tangents. They were. I'm, I, I was. I, I was going to make some up so that people would be like, I wanted to hear those yeah. tangents about the pygmy elephants. <laughs> um, anyway, goodbye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>